Hey guys, thanks for checking out RV Weekends. After we put out a request for things to shoot on our channel, somebody requested to do a RV tour. So that's what's coming up next. Stick around. Ever since we started this channel at the beginning of 2020, the drone has been out of commission, but... The drone is back. My hat's off to DJI because yeah. my drone had some software issues and I sent it back to California and they fixed it, no charge, sent it back and paid all the postage. Thanks, DJI. It is way up there. I thought it might be cool to shoot some aerial video of me taking the cover off the RV. We're going to do a little unwrapping of our unnamed camper. So Robert's going to use the drone and I'm going to do a little handheld. And we're going to, I'm going to give you a little tour of our little home away from home travel trailer. Coach, RV, all of the above. I'm trying to figure out, do we name her? I say yes. Robert's like, eh. So what do you guys think? Yep, there she is all covered up. We usually cover her up. Um, if we're going to not go anywhere for, you know, two, two, three weeks, then we cover her. Um, we've got an ADCO cover that we've had since November. So far, it seems really, really good. But again, we've only had it since November. So the first step is he is releasing all the little hooks. So there's a pass through that you can toss the attachers to keep it secure. So currently he's unlatching all of those to get that off. Yeah. They all have just as you can see, just these little quick clips. Little quick clips. That's what we've got, Attico. It marks the rear. I mean, they definitely designed this to be easy. We keep it hooked to power while we're, while it's parked. It's our preference. And as you can see, there's the, it's got it marked as the front. You hear the buzzing. We got the drone going. So. Yeah, the one thing we did notice that if you've got sharp areas on your, on your RV, you may want to pad those areas before you put the cover on it. Uh, we've got another one up at the top where our gutter is. And that was because we realized, we discovered kind of afterwards that if the wind blows, that puts friction. And we didn't want to prematurely wear out our cover. So identify those areas on your camper that might be rub points. Um, because definitely we discovered that after we uncovered it for the first time. But look, just like that. She's getting uncovered! This is like one of my favorite times. Let me get past this. Sorry about that. That was a little quick. Robert's dodging the lines up there. And no, they're not power lines. And vents. And domes. Whatever. Yeah. There she is. But that's not a power line he's touching. So nobody, I don't want any comments saying he's being dangerous. That was not a power line. We, that was one of our concerns though when we first pulled it in the first time. Um, 
I was worried we were going to hit one of the lines, so we were watching it, but it's not a power line. And we clear it just fine. So there we go. She is uncovered. I'm going to call her Daisy. Don't tell him. All right, guys, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, for your information, I used to be a roofing contractor, so I have experience with uh, power lines and talk to electrical people. And those wires, uh, the lower one is not electrical, but the one up top is, but they are insulated. And the uh, threat of getting shocked are very minimal because the wires are insulated. And even if they weren't, uh, I'm not touching the ground, so uh, the, the likelihood of getting electrocuted is very minimal. Um, a couple things that we learned later is the tarp comes with those little gutter socks. There's like little baggies that go over the gutters to protect them from tearing the uh, tarp. And the other areas obviously didn't come with it, like bumpers and stuff. We recommend getting uh, little uh, swimming noodles to kind of wrap around the bumpers and things like that. We haven't done it yet, but that's something we thought about. Uh, also, the uh, drone is, I've already, I set it up to orbit the camper so you can get a, uh, you know, 360 degree view while I'm doing this. It is definitely one of the cool features of the, the drone that uh, you can program it to orbit an object and stay orbiting as long as you want. And you can customize the orbit to be as big of a radius as you want, as fast as an orbit as you want, the direction that you want it to do. So it's pretty cool. So the, the drone I have is a DJI Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Very nice drone. Um, I love it. So it's just doing its thing around and around. It'll keep doing that. And when it stops doing it, that means the battery is getting low and it lands automatically. So it's a really cool drone. Uh, on another note, I have since learned to untarp and keep the tarp on the roof thus reducing the amount of grass that gets up into the cover. So that helps to keep it on the roof. And then when I go to retarp it, I bring the whole thing onto the roof and undo it on the roof and it makes it easier to, to install. So it's rather convenient. It's definitely worth the money. I think we paid $175. I wasn't sure exactly. Um, but it was definitely worth the money and we enjoy it. And right here you can see the drone landing by itself Actually, look to the right, you can see the controller on the ground, and the drone is landing all by itself because the battery's low. So it has that safety feature built into it, uh, so it won't crash when the battery gets low. Definitely a cool drone. All right, here I am removing my tarps from the tires to protect them from the sun. You definitely don't want them to get burnt from the sun when you're not using them. And here's where I noticed we had a flat tire, uh, which I mentioned in the previous video where we got it replace we got the valve stem replaced at no charge at Gatto's uh, tire and auto center so it's definitely a good idea to untarp your rv a few days before you're going to leave so if this happens you've got time to get the tire uh, repaired hey guys i just wanted to do uh, a tour of the outside of our grand design transcend i got my grand design hat on uh, so we have a transcend uh, explorer 260 rb so um, the first thing we have is our um, tongue hitch. What we got here is a standard um, safety cable, safety chains, the, the uh, typical latching mechanism, uh, the, the seven prong hookup with the power brakes here through the cord. We have this power wench, it comes with a light. So you have two functions. One is to turn on the light, turn off the light, the other is extend and retract the wench for up and down. Um, behind that, we have our propane tanks. You can either use this access door. It's got these little knobs that uh, have notches in them. Here. Okay. Yeah. So you can turn on the valve without taking off the cover. And That's a you, cool feature. If you need to get better access you pull the whole cover off so it reveals our two, the two propane tanks and there's actually if you look over here there's a valve to toggle between which tank you're going to use so right now we're on this tank so you would turn that on and if that tank goes empty 
then you turn it off and then you'd switch the valve to this tank and turn it on so and I uh, constantly lube this area to keep it from uh, seizing up and oxidizing you can already see some oxidizing so that's that so and uh, we'll put this back on now we have our uh, battery uh, cover this houses a marine battery it came with the, the trailer so it was a nice uh, uh, also this uh, the power winch came with the trailer too the battery came with the trailer you can see there's room to add a second barrier, uh, battery if you're going to be doing um, some boondocking to hold more uh, power uh, also um, this is a thicker kind of aluminum on the outside thicker than typical aluminum it's got this rough look here for to uh, protect it from rocks and debris from chipping the paint which is nice so um, so we move around we got uh, right here we got a solar uh, input 10 amps it's already pre-wired for solar so if you get a solar outside you can just hook it up right there here is our storage Right, it locks. There must be that. It's that the other plastic lock. bag. There we go. We had a bag peeking out. But anyway, you got storage here. It goes all the way to the other side. Let me open the other side. Hi. As you can see, there's lots of storage here. We got tons of things, barbecue grill, stinky sleeky, more storage, more storage, and more storage. It's very large. I would say it's um, about three foot wide by two foot tall. And it's got this, uh, it's got this light here. It has a motion sensor lighting to where you jump in and it turns on. Here is our um, station to control the water if you're on the outside water plump coming in from the city hookup you keep the valve here if you're going to use the onboard fresh water tank you'd switch it here and here's where you would hook up that water right here and then here's your battery disconnect so if you don't want the battery being drawn by any appliance inside the unit you would switch it here uh, you have your tv cable hookup um, and the bat the battery I'm sorry, the satellite um, hook up right there and an AC outlet right here. Electro outlet. So down here um, is where the garden hose or your city water would come in. There's a little spot in there. You feed the, the garden hose up, close this, and you get that little slider window to, to leave the most of the door open. I mean closed while the hose hooks up here. All right. So that's that. So this is a window to our bedroom. The gray water valve for dumping the the sink water that builds up because we have a sink over here um, on its own. On the next, so that's where you dump out your gray water here. And then we have the slider. The slider uh, doesn't come out really far because uh, it's not like there's recliners or dinette. It's just the refrigerator, the stove, and such things. So it only comes out about 24 inches, a couple feet. And here's the uh, refrigerator uh, heat dispenser vent. The dissipate heat out of the, the AC compressor. Then we have the stove, overhead stove vent to vent out fumes when you're cooking. We have our beautiful Transcend Explore decal. Um, then as we continue, here we have the valve you hook up and you have your uh, valve for the black water and the valve for the gray water so back here we have the bathroom and that's where the shower drain is and the bathroom sink drain there so we have a tank back here and a tank up front uh, so and the black water tank also is stored back here so here we have the stabilizer jack. Once your camper is in position and level, then you put out your jacks. Here is your AC input. And uh, I forgot to mention, but in the front, we have another stabilizer jack right underneath the storage door. 
just like this one. Um, we have the uh, the AC, I'm sorry, the 110 volt input 30 amp circuit comes in right here. It's got a nice twist, twist locking. So once you plug it in, once you get it plugged in, you just do this little twist and it won't come out. And it has this cool little light right here that you can see from a distance that your power's on if you uh, are plugging in and all that. Here we have a nice feature that is when you're dumping your black water tanks, this is, is an extra input for water to wrench your black water tank as you're draining it. Um, and it has a caution sticker here and the caution is telling you don't have your black water valve closed and put water in there for any uh, length of time because your tank will fill up and dump sewage into your RV and you don't want to do that. So what I usually do, I'll hook up my water and I'll run it while I'm dumping and then after the majority of it comes out, I'll close the valve, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll fill it up for about a minute or two. So once it's filled up about a minute or two, and then I'll open the valve and it'll clean out. And you can see it'll be dumping out more trash. I'll do that like three or four times. Um, and then I'll be done. Disconnect, put the cap back on. So here we have our ladder to get on our roof. And I use that quite frequently because I hook, hook up a GoPro on the front to uh, videotape our travels. Also to... Uh, check all the seals around all the protrusions in the roof we go and check all that mastic and sealant to make sure we're not getting holes and stuff like that so we don't get a roof leak um, another thing we do is we cover the rv we cover the travel trailer with a cover so we do that from the roof so this is a very uh, nice uh, feature to have to get on the roof uh, also what we have here is a secondary storage in the bumper uh, if you want to storage uh, your stinky slinky, you can store it in here. So that's kind of nice. We don't use it. Another good thing about this travel trailer is that the bumper is rated to hold 250 pounds, which is really nice because if you want to put your bicycles on here, um, you put anything like kayaks on here, you could put a bracket that could have more area, surface area, to mount your kayaks or your, your, uh, your bicycles. But right now, all it has is our spare tire on it. So that's a nice feature because some RVs, the bumpers, you cannot put anything on them. So having 250 pounds sustained weight is a, a bonus. Um, you look up here, you see that we have a window in our bathroom. Um, and it's nice when you're camping, you can see out uh, your bathroom when you're doing your things in the mirrors and stuff. Also above the window, you see it's already pre-wired or has a mounting point for a, uh, a backup camera or a rear facing camera to see traffic while you're driving. Uh, it's a really nice feature. And again, like I said, we have our beautiful Transcend Explorer uh, decal with the grand design. Uh, we love our grand design that's a very high quality product also we have the spare tire which i mentioned and this is our little cover to protect our uh protect our uh cover from getting torn up on the sharp edges uh when it's covered the wind blows and such so we come on around here we got our exhaust for our uh, propane so as the propane burns inside uh the furnace the hot water heater it has to vent out those gases and that's what this does so these this is the area where it gets hot so you don't want to put anything here buy it because it gets really hot this is a one bracket for our awning and you see our awning spans about 20 feet um, right here we have exterior speaker for playing music outside which is nice um, this is our um, recliner window so behind our recliners is a nice window looks like we need to wash our Camper. It's pollen time in Florida already. <laughs> so we see this is our uh, LED lighting out there. It puts out some light um, for when it's dark. We also have an AC outlet here. GFI actually, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. We got a cable output. So if you want to hook up a TV here on the outside of your camper while you're under your awning, you have access to do that. Uh, here we have the hot water heater vent. So, uh, and when you want to mess with your hot water heater, this is where you would do it. 
Um, let's see here. This is our beautiful window in front of our dinette. So if you're eating breakfast, you got a beautiful window which slides open so you can have uh, a breeze. And they're also tinted pretty good. They are tinted. Well, here's our other speaker. And here is our handle uh, for getting in and out. We'll go to that in a second. Right here is your freshwater fill-up right here. It's freshwater fill-up right here. So if you don't want to hook in over there, um, you just stick your garden hose in here and it'll fill up your freshwater tank. All right. So here's our decal for our model. Like I said, we have a 260 RB, where RB stands for rear bath, uh, versus a BH was a bunk house. So they have bunks. We don't have any bunks. So it's an Explorer by Grand Design. So um, after that, we have our steps to get into the RV. This is how you would do it. And I put some artificial turf on the steps uh, to kind of get the dirt off of our shoes as we walk in. So it works really well, actually, to getting the dirt off. And we have our door lock. We have two locks, a dead bowl and regular, which, a uh, regular lock, which is a uh, main uh, standard fare. And then we have a frosted window on our door and it has a friction hinge. So a friction hinge, what does it mean? It means that the door doesn't flop open. Like when you unlatch it and push the door open, it didn't just swing uh, and hit the back of the RV, it actually stops when you let go. The door stops. So that's what the friction hinge does. And we'll show that when we tour the inside. We'll show that friction hinge. Uh, so I'm going to put the steps back. They're pretty simple. Now you're ready to travel. Here's a, a, a bedroom window, just like the other one we, we came around. It was the bedroom window. And then the other bracket for our awning. Um, if you look up top, you can see our gutters that divert the water from flipping on our head. It goes to the front. So, oh, we got a dog. Our neighbors. Here's the other side of our storage. And as you can see, we put our uh, lawn chairs. Our, this is where we put stabilizers on the ground so our stabilizers don't sink into the ground. So those are just uh, pieces of wood I cut out and more of our storage. It's where you can put your level to level your RV, other wheel chocks, gloves, and it also has another light here, which is very nice. So you, you can see through the whole unit if you need that. All right, so that does it. We're back to the front to see the very front of the uh, travel trailer, and that is, going to conclude our tour of the exterior of our Grand Design Transcend Explorer 260 RV. Thanks guys for watching. We're going to do the inside now. Okay, we just stepped in the camper and this is our entrance to the camper and it's got a nice opening to the kitchen and now Sherry's going to take over. Hi, welcome to our little house. Um, this is our main living area here. As you can see, I'll bring you back and we'll look at it a little bit more. But we've got, with our slide out, we've got a lot of space. And I'll show you again when we're all done and we're getting ready to walk out. I'll bring that slide in so you can see um, when I talk about one of the reasons we chose this grand design RV was the usability of it with the slide closed. So that's going to come in handy when we're loading, packing, and boondocking. So I will show you, show you that when we are done. But we're going to start at the nose. So we're going to go towards the bedroom. We have a front bedroom and a rear bath. So back here in our bedroom, we have a walk around queen size bed. We opted for the short because Robert and I are both not really tall people and we wanted to have the extra room so that we can walk clearly through it. We have um, a nice little area there where we can put our phones. He's got a USB charger. Both of our windows, we've got two windows back here. Both windows um, open, close, and they have blinds. Very dark. 
And then we've got our closet here, which Robert has stored in there, his hangers. We've got a little portable fan. Um, we've got some block outs that we can put in the windows if we want the windows in the bedroom to be even darker. We also have up under the bed, we do have storage, which we've utilized that with we store some of our lights that we put outside there. We have an, an extra mattress pad that we'll use if we have company and we use that to help pad the dinette that folds out into a bed. Um, we have an ice maker. Can't sing enough praises about taking an ice maker if you can afford it and you have space for it. It is amazing to have fresh ice made for you all the time. And this actually works on a hinge so that it stays up so you don't have to worry about getting shut in there. We're going to be working on some storage for this because we have some big changes coming. So that's that. We're going to come around and have Robert come on in here. He's being my videoer. Um, on Amazon I found these amazing baskets. We got lucky because they actually fit. We flip them around and they fit completely in there. And we can fit three of them actually side by side but we can leave it out and we can load them up and then we can bring our clothes out here and we can put them straight up here and that way we're utilizing every space because this is the front the nose of the camper we have the curve that goes around and so this curves around so i could climb up here and show you it's fairly deep it goes up to about here so it's a nice deep space and so when i put this in here that's pushed all the way back. So we're using every little bit of space up there. My closet, same as Robert's, I keep all of my my jackets and sweatshirts out here because we're in Florida and we don't really need them all the time. So they're out here. Again, we're gonna be having to reconfigure this a little bit more. Our emergency exit, which is important to have. We have our fuses right down here, which I really like how convenient it is. It pops, and there you go. You can get to all your fuses you can see, or your breakers you can see if you've got anything blown. And it just makes it very easy. Robert installed a hook here for me so that I can hang my purse, I can hang my jacket, anything that I want to hang back here to kind of keep it up out of the way. We also have a location here for where we can put a TV, which we probably will be doing in the future. Neither one of us are big TV watchers, but again, we've got some big changes we'll be talking about in the next couple videos that might, might change a little bit of that. We do also have, we have it blocked off, but we do have a fan up here so we can open up and we can run the fan. Actually, no, it's not a fan. That's just a vent. Correct, Robert? Just yep. a vent? Yeah, just yep. a dome light little just a vent. Dome. Yep. So these things, if you need to ever block out some of the light, you can buy these by the roll. You can buy them by the sheet. They are fabulous. We have a barring door, so it slides. And when we close this at night, we have been in about upper 30s, low 40s at night temperatures. And this room stays nice and toasty. We wouldn't even need to have the heat in back in here. Air conditioning wise, we do have ducted AC. So we have a, a duct right here that duct dumps into here. So we stay nice and cool also if we keep this door closed. We also have the smoke detector in the bedroom because um, you can't be too safe. But for those of us that have like the sliding doors, you know, you always want to make sure when you're traveling that you're snapping that door back up to keep it from sliding back and forth. We also have lights over our bed. So if we want to read or if we're trying to clean up and pack up, we have some additional lights right here that are not controlled by these. These are our main lights. We have one switch that which will turn on all of these main lights. And we also have a bedroom switch here that will turn them off. So we're going to leave those on for now. We're going to leave the bedroom. Here's our center with all of our notifications, how we bring our slide in and out, our awning. 
This button here will turn all our ceiling lights on, our exterior lights, to turn our water pump, our gas, and our electric for the water heaters. Any of these buttons we can push and it will tell us, you know, right now we have full battery, we have very low fresh, which we're being stored right now in our backyard. So our black tank is empty, gray, everything's empty. We dumped last time we went. So this is our kitchen. Something you'll notice with the grand design is they do not skimp on storage, nor quality. So this is one of our doors and notice the, the, the thickness of that. This is not a particle board. This is a solid wood door and it's got some oomph to it. So right now we're currently just kind of using this to store some miscellaneous things. We have our games up there. We have coffee makers and dish strainers, just some miscellaneous. We have storage up here and none of it, and all of it I should say is really pretty fairly deep. So, not a lot of shallow storage. And again, right now, we're in between camping trips. So most of our stuff's not in here. The stuff that's here is the stuff that we usually leave. Um, a nice little storage shelf here. Put our tissues, put some spices, you can put some soap. And then over here we have our bowls, my tea kettle, coffee stuff, all of our cups. But again, a good solid door. I mean, I have to really push it and pull it. Um, one of the things that also sold me, us on this RV was the amount of counter space and the sink. We've got a great deal of prep space between this area and then the other side next to the stove. But I have it set up with the strainers. And you can take a look. We've got a nice big sink and it's got the pull down so that we can spray wherever we would need to. Um, and this is one of those collapsible dish strainers. So if you if you didn't want to keep it out and you wanted to store it, it goes right down into nothing. And it just so happens that size fit perfect. We wash our dishes a lot of times in here. And if we're worried about running out of gray tank capacity, we will then dump this in our toilet so it helps to keep our black tank the water flowing it makes it easier for us to drain our black, black tank and we won't fill up our gray as much. This drawer, I think every house has it. I think every RV has it. It's kind of the junk drawer. So here's our junk drawer. We have flashlights in it. We've got liners. We have maps from where we were just at last time. Video coming soon. It's our little bit of miscellaneous. And then we have our little miscellaneous area down here. But again, storage is huge. I, I'm going to reach my arm back. And it is the entire length of my arm is how deep that storage is. We have a spice rack right here. So if you wanted to store some things or towels, I think would work out great. We have under the sink storage, which is not as big down here. It does angle off, but we still have quite a bit of room. It's that same depth at the top, but then our sink drains are there. And then we have one here. Now this one is not, I'm not sure what's behind there. Robert, do you know what's behind there? No, <clears throat> I would assume it's a water heater. Water heater. I think so. Water pump. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is great. We discovered this is an awesome place if you drink soda because we can store actually six six packs <laughs> or six 12 packs in here and they fit perfect and they don't slide around and then we have one last drawer on this side which we use for all of our bigger grilling accessories some of our tongs spatula yeah, you gotta have plating all right let's come over to our our refrigerator we have it closed normally when we're storing it we would have the doors open because we have electric running to it but we don't have the the refrigerator and the freezer running right now but this will be our refrigerator we have good space we actually have a door we can pull out so we can put produce in and then we have a nice size freezer and then the controls on here to see whether or not we're going to run it off electric or propane. 
actually comes with a really nice little drawer down here. I think they advertise this as a pet drawer, and I'm not quite sure why. But for us, um, I've been using it to store placemats. So it would be a good place if you have um, some frying pans that you want to store. Right now, we just have some placemats. All right, we're going to come on over here. Here's the rest of our kitchen area. Again, this is like our prep area. This is where we do a lot of our cutting and prepping for our food. Plate storage we have up here. We do a mixture of paper and plastic. Uh, we have some glass in here, which were, they were just left over. Occasionally we get fancy and we'll have some glass. We got our microwave, which has come in handy. We do use that. And we have our Atwood Dometic stove. So we have a th three burner propane stove, works amazing. And then we have our propane oven. And then we have one more drawer down here, which is empty. So you know what I'm saying now when I'm saying we have a lot of storage? We have a lot of storage. The size of this is just, you know, you pull it all the way out and do it. It's a big drawer. One of the other things that we're really thrilled about, especially for when you take longer camping trips, is a place to store all, all of your food, your canned stuff. So we have a pantry. It has works on a motion sensor light, so as soon as the door gets open, the light comes on. So when we're not camping, we, these are the things that we typically will leave in here. We don't take it with us. Um, we have a knife set. We have some, this is kind of, tends to be like our protein bars, that's that kind of stuff. We've got some canned goods, some spices. I recommend putting them into another container because it will keep them from sliding around. So now if this slides, it's this sliding versus a bunch of little cans falling out. We have our pot and pan storage here. Down here we have our blender is stored and this is a griddle and this is the one appliance that I never really used much except for camping and I, we love it for camping because we can make grilled cheese, we can do our bacon, our sausage, our eggs, we can make just about everything on here if we don't want to cook it outside. And it wipes clean and it's been fabulous. Alright, <clears throat> so slide to our entertainment area. So another reason, I keep saying this, but another reason that we were really interested in this camper is at the time we were looking, there was not a whole lot of campers that were made with your TV across from ah, the recliners. And we found this one and we were like, yeah. Grand Design was one of the one manufacturers that almost consistent, consistently put their TVs across from their, their seating area. So we have the TV. It is got its hook on a thing so we could pull it out if we needed to um we have enough room back here that we can put our sound bar from the house so we took we hook our sound bar up um we do anchor this when we're traveling with some bungees just to make sure it doesn't shift around too much because when you're traveling down the road your camper's at the mercy of the road so everybody describes it as a little mini earthquake every time we travel Everything inside kind of goes through a little mini earthquake as we're going down the road. And we've hit some bumpy roads. So we want to protect our TV. We have cabinets up here. This is one big cabinet. Goes all the way through. We tend to store our, our camera equipment, our video equipment. We have some DVDs that we will watch. And use too. And then this is our sound system. Um, so we can Bluetooth to our from our phones. And we can play our music outside or inside. We can also hook it where the TV sound comes through that and the speakers. We put our Blu-ray player up here when we're camping. Right now it's in the house. But we will put it up here and that way we can also watch Blu-ray. It does have a disc where we could do it there, but we like the Blu-ray. And Robert, correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. No. Nope. <clears throat> um, we have our thermostat here and we have used it so we've used it for the AC and we've used it for the heat and it's worked wonderful I would recommend though that if you get a new camper and you're 
planning on using the propane heat run it a few times before you actually have to use it because there's a coating on the elements and just like when you turn your heat on in your house for the first time in the winter you get that funny smell that burnt smell you will get that with this so we learned that and it will set the fire alarms off so if you like, you will like getting woken up at three to five o'clock in the morning when your heat cuts on for the first time do that small little step and just run it through and burn all that stuff off um, here is our bathroom. So this was a rear bath. So we're now at the tail of our camper. And this was one of the, one of the reasons we like this was we have a nice big shower. I mean, this is, I'm not, again, I'm not the tallest person, but I have got plenty of room to do my, to take my shower. It's got a skylight, so my hand is completely extended, and that, that's how much more room. And I'm 5'3", so you can, you can judge from that. And with it, it comes with this cool little enclosure that actually squeegees the water off and then pours it right back into here so it can drain. It's been a great, it's been a great little setup. We also like this because we've got three medicine cabinets. Um, little sink, you know, that's one, you know, that you can't get it all. So we do have a little bathroom sink, but we have three medicine cabinets. And again, they're good size, they're good size medicine cabinets. This one's a little bit deeper. We use the Happy Camper. Recommend that. This is our, we keep our first aid kit up here. We have everything that you might possibly need to help us or any other campers that might need some help. And then we have the other one over here when I just keep some things in here that are left over that I don't really need in the house. We've got lots of towel storage here or whatever you'd want to do. A baskets would work and you could put some of your toiletries. Robert installed a little towel holder for us. And then we've got the shelves here. We've got underneath storage and we keep our little trash can there. And we also keep all our extra toilet papers back there. And then even more storage. So this, I can't even, this is way longer than my arm, deep. Um, Robert's got his blanket in there. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got room. We're not utilizing it as, as to its full potential, but we will be. Um, you gotta have a way to clean up the messy floors. And then we have our toilet brush back there because you have to clean the messy toilets too. It's all fun. One thing when we were camping the last time, um, it did get a little bit chilly. So we didn't really run our propane heater too much, but we did use a little space heater. So we kept that plugged in. It's got a thermostat on it so it would come on when it felt like it needed to. Um, this is a typical RV toilet. We got a foot flush but yeah this is the bathroom and again this also has the barn style door so it closes all the way so you're nice and private it does have an exhaust fan so we have an exhaust fan here and then your AC that's ducted comes from there now your heat if the heat comes on the heat is going to come out of down by the bottom of the shower, which feels really nice on your tootsies when you're wet and cold. And just like the bedroom, when you travel, you make sure that these are snapped on. So nothing's wiggling. Now we're into the back into the living area. And we have storage up here which we tend to use again for any kind of extra media cameras um Rob will, we'll put our drones in there we'll put just about anything we need to and then i put another one of those baskets so that's that third basket i put it in here and i can then pull it out it's got a flat iron right now but you can pull it out and load it up put it right back in here and it's ready to go we have lights that are over top of here and all of the windows have blinds they're i wouldn't say blackout but they're pretty close to it they just if i can reach it 
We got it all the way up there. Here it is. You just pull down and then you just push them up. So our recliners are recliners. They have storage for all of our remotes. So we have our TV remote. We have a remote that goes to our stereo system. And then we have our fire stick remote. So we do have a fire stick that we hook up. And they all come with cup holders and they have a pull lever that you can recline. You can lay all the way back. We can chill. And then our dinette. One of the things that we've discovered after we camped the first time was they've got a neat little area here on each side that you can throw shoes, boots, all of that and get them up out of the way. So Robert has a side and I have a side and we tend to store our shoes when we're camping there. I would like to get a tray to put there so we can pull it out when they get sand. But it's a nice little place to kind of put your stuff, your shoes away. And here's our dinette. It comes with two sofa or back of the cushion choices. So you can do this check, which is the fabric, or you can go with just the solid vinyl. And then this folds down, of course, you pull the table off and pop the legs and it slides in and you can make this into a little bed. And it has been used and it's semi-comfortable. Um, here is our AC for our main, our main living area. Here again is our, we, we got that ducted AC coming through here. So we have that and then we have an event that we can open up an electric vent. Here's what I was talking about. There's some speakers. We can listen to the music in here and we've got lots of little lights that we play with. You know, we can put that little light on. I like to decorate them. I like these little, see the batteries are good. So you don't want real candles in a camper because, you know, it's a fire hazard. But these little ones won't catch your place on fire, but they still look pretty. Yeah, so this area is, uh, is pretty good sized. So when you're going to close the slider, we don't normally keep the slider out when we're parked. So you always want to make sure that there's nothing in the way when you are going to close the slider. So Robert's going to pause that for a minute so that I can walk outside to make sure that there's nothing that's obstructing the slider and then I'm going to close it. Alright, so I just checked. Everything is clear from the slider. So now I can come over here to our control panel and I'm just going to push the button. Robert's going to show you kind of how far our slider comes in. So here we go. That's it. So like I was explaining before, one of the reasons we chose this camper was so that we could still function without having the slide to be out. We wanted to make sure if we had to pull over somewhere and go to the bathroom, we could get to the bathroom, we could get to our refrigerator, we could load up our pantry, we could get to our bedroom, we could do everything that we wanted to do with it. So we still have plenty of room and a clearer way to go back and forth. Another little thing that Robert installed when we got this, and if you're going to camp a lot and, and you'd like to use the screen and get some fresh air, I would recommend installing this little pull bar, bar because these things are not very big and they're kind of flimsy. So this way, when we have our screen open, we pull that and we don't have to worry about damaging our door. 
This also has our motion sensor. So if we have this set to motion sense, um, if you walk into the door, the light will come on. As soon as you walk away from the door, the light will go off, which is really handy if you're outside and it's dark, it's late. When you come up to your camper, you need to know that you open up your door and your light pops on and you can see and you're not walking around fumbling for the switch. We also have little hangy hooks that we put keys on. We put our hat up, jackets, anything else that we need to kind of get quick access to. That's it. This How about the flush water? <clears throat> oh, yes. Always have the fly swatter. And in this video, I think we've killed three flies. It's Florida. What can I say? So I hope you enjoyed the inside tour of our grand design. The Transcend Explore 260 RB.